Marketing means it's it's not it's not any one thing. It's a it's an entire system. It's a process. Business of Architecture, episode two forty three. Hello, Architect Nation. I'm Enoch Sears, and this is the podcast for architects and designers, where you'll discover tips, strategies, and secrets for running a profitable and impactful architecture practice. If you haven't already, get free instant access to the four-part architecture firm profit map video by going to freearchitectgift.com. Enter your best email address on that page and you'll get instant access. Today's podcast is sponsored by BQE Core, the all-in-one solution for your architecture firm. From project management to accounting, time and expenses, billing and business intelligence, Core makes work easy. Get a free trial at businessofarchitecture.com forward slash trial. In today's show, we dive into how to create a systematic marketing process for your firm with architect Dan Shear, based out of Columbia and Charleston, South Carolina. Dan Shear, welcome back to the business of architecture. Thank you. So Dan, as we mentioned in our previous episode, you and I have worked together a bunch. And the last episode, we talked about business processes and systems and freeing up that time in the business. Today, I want to focus over onto the business development side of things. And you ended up joining our mastermind coaching group that we run. Tell me about that process. First of all, start me off with telling me what made you want to join that group in the first place. What were you seeing in the in the business at the time? Well, um, I'll start off with the, you know, the architect's marketing Institute as just a regular member and was, you know, slowly developing my, my, my marketing system. Uh, we went to the, my wife and I went to the, the, um, the get together in New York in, I believe it was May of last year and got to hear some of the marketing mastermind members speak. I happened to be reading a book at the time. I can't remember what the name of the book is, but it went into a big deal about mentors and mastermind groups and how important they were. And I'm like, there's no architecture mastermind groups. Well, I was wrong. Um, show up and, uh, um, you know, it, at the time I had an idea of what I wanted to do. I had a plan in place. I was very inconsistent. I didn't follow through with some of my ideas. I get sidetracked, get busy, get lazy. Um, I'll get lazy and not do the things that really need to be done. And so, you know, getting involved in the mastermind group, puts, you know, you guys keep stuff in front of me all the time. You have the, the mastermind group gives me opportunities to communicate, not just with a mentor or, you know, a teacher, but also other architects who are, who are going through exactly what I'm going through. And, you know, what I'm finding is if I don't stay involved, I, I, I get out of, out of think for a few weeks, start doing other things. Don't follow my routine of doing the marketing, you know, following and getting on the calls I, I get behind and I'll go back two weeks later, three weeks later, and I look at something another architect's done. And I'm like, wow, they're, they're ahead of me. They're doing better than me. It's time for me to get back in here and keep up because these guys are, these guys are running with it. So it's a, it's, um, it, it took me from trying to create a better marketing system and plodding along and actually, you know, doing it to really quickly creating a marketing system and, adding a little competitive edge to, to some of it. Not that we compete against each other, but you know, you see another architect come up with a great idea and you go, well, you know, that, it, that's a fantastic idea. And, and my, maybe I can use that and tweak it and do this for my type of work. I probably, I do. So it's, it's a, it's motivation. It's, um, you know, constant source of ideas, not just from you and Richard, but from, from the whole team. So it, it makes it very dynamic. And um, it took me from, slowly implementing a marketing system that was working to, you know, there's it's unlimited what we can do now really with the, with our marketing. Um, we just have to keep, you know, keep day after day after day implementing, adding new pieces and parts and, you know, staying involved with the group. Uh, recently, I was talking to an architect, Dan, who was telling me that when he first started out on his own firm, he basically thought that marketing was a business card, a logo, and a website. And I know that this is, I remember thinking the same thing for you. What, what is the definition of marketing for you now? What does it mean to you? That word marketing. Marketing means it's, it's not, it's not any one thing. It's a, it's an entire system. It's a process. It's, it's the website, but it's also, um, what you do every month. Who, who do you contact 
every single month. How many phone calls do you make? It's not just, I need a business card and a website. It's not just joining the chamber of commerce and shaking a few hands. It's, it's having a, a system in place and then having something very specific to market. Don't just say, you know, we're architects and we can do anything you need. It's, it's making yourself stand out by having a, you know, you don't have to not do any other work, but when, when you, when you present yourself to someone, you go, this is what we do and, and we're good at it. And you know, it, it, it resonates with people. When you say something specific to market, tell me about that. Well, uh, again, I, I have an example. Um, we, we, uh, specialize in renovation, um, historic preservation and urban infill type projects. I was recently at a, a urban land Institute meeting, which is a great group. It's developers, contractors, architects, you know, land planners. It's, it's a fantastic group of people. Um, but it's a very competitive environment for an architect. Cause you get a group of a hundred people in there and 12 of them may be architects and some of them are massive architectural firms that do huge projects and, you know, incredible portfolios. And what I learned in this, this last meeting I went to actually was that you have to have something specific to make yourself stand out. I was in a group of about seven people, a couple of contractors, a couple of developers and three architects. And, you know, the group was just talking about what everyone does. And the other architects were, you know, going on. We specialize in upscale residential and retail and, you know, commercial office buildings. And the other one's like, well, we do, we'll do, we'll do a lot of retail and we do, you know, institutional and we do, and they were like, you know, just almost rambling about all the stuff they do. And, uh, you know, they, they asked me, what, what do you do? And I said, well, you know, we, we bring structure to life and the whole conversation stopped. I had, I had hit on something that, you know, they were like, what is he talking about? And I explained, you know, what we try to do is, is, you know, you know, in our, in our work, um, we specialize in commercial renovations, historic preservation, urban infill type projects. That's, that's what we do. We do it all the time. We educate ourselves constantly to get better at doing that work. And, you know, our goal is to, to take these old structures and bring them back to life. But at the same time, bringing structure to the owner's life by having a, a, a methodical um, approach to, to their, you know, taking their project from day one, following it through in a painless process for them to, 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 to completion. And just, you know, that opened up a flood of questions as opposed to me saying, well, we do renovations and we do houses sometimes and we do, you know, whatever. So being, being specific, having something very specific, having that little comment that was different than the way everyone answers the question, it, it, it set me apart. And, you know, you know, I'm learning that 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 makes a big difference. I mean, these other firms, these other guys are with large firms. They do big work, but they weren't very interesting to the to the group that I was that I had me talking to because they the way they presented themselves. So what I'm hearing is that the way you presented yourself was engaging and it caught the interest of the group. Where did you learn to speak like that, Dan? Um, Architects Marketing Institute. Mastermind group. Um, the, 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 these groups um, constantly reinforce the idea that if you're going to sell yourself, you have to find something unique, something specific. It has to be the truth, but it, it has to be something that, that just makes you a little different than everyone else. And, um, you know, you, 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 it's a, again, it's a process it's like everything else. You, you continue to work on it, refine it. Uh, next time somebody asks me that question, I may answer a little differently because I learned a little bit. So, you know, with this, this whole ongoing process of going through the training over and over, having it reiterated and refined and hear, you know, hearing your, your, your colleague, other architects getting feedback from those guys, that's, that's, you know, that, that helps you become confident enough to say something like that in a, in a group of, you know, obviously very talented individuals it makes you stand out. Dan, you've talked about marketing and business development as a system for you. What are the pieces and parts of that system in your firm? Um, <clears throat> pieces and parts. I know it's, it's getting a little complex now, 
um, just because we're, it's growing quickly. Um, but, you know, we have things like we do a monthly newsletter. And, you know, we started out the monthly newsletter was we kind of keyed on, on one of our projects and told a little background about the project. But that's starting to evolve now into more we're telling stories. You know, we, a lot of times it'll be around a, a project, but we'll also interview the owner and we'll get his backstory and maybe his family life rolls in and and it becomes more entertainment necessarily in the newsletter than look at our look at our building look what we did and so we find that's getting a lot of positive feedback we also have in the newsletter um links or 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 you know email addresses for them to we'll 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 touch we'll touch on our options and feasibility study that we put in place since we started the marketing system uh, which is a way for us to, to kind of get people's attention and get a, a job started we'll offer um, you know, 15 minute consultations in the newsletter or will links to, to free information for them to download. And so that's, that's just one little part of our system. Um, I have, I have, um, you know, become way more proactive recently. It's not a good way to say it, but, um, much more proactive in reaching out to past clients, past references, calling them up, emailing them, asking them for a note. I would never ask somebody for a reference before. Now, usually if I ask, if they don't, can't refer me to someone, they go, if, if something comes up, I'd be more than happy to. Whereas before I didn't want to ask for a reference. I felt like that was bad in some way. So that's part of our system. You know, methodically, you know, I have a list of five people I call every week, every Monday, I write down five people, call them every week. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's, there's, there's, it's a, I could I could spend all day talking about the system. So, but those are like three things that we do regularly that, that make a difference. Dan, what I'm hearing from you as well is before uh, it sounded like there was some reluctance about some of these activities, but then when I hear you talking about it now, it sounds like there's a bit of excitement about that. There is, there is. And again, I'm not the only architect. I'm sure that's reluctant to say, look, I'm really good at this. You need to hire me. I'm an expert at this. There's a lot of architects like that out there. There's a lot of architects that don't want to ask for a referral. They want to. They don't want to. They want to bother their clients, or they don't want to seem forward. And that's how business is done, and that's what people expect. For some reason, architects don't get that. But asking for a referral is easy. The worst thing they can do is go, "Sorry, I don't know anybody." Or I guess the worst thing they can do is do is go, "I don't think you're very good. I'm not going to refer you." Well, you'll know you need to do something better next time, so you don't get that answer again. But you know, most of the time, people are more than happy to refer you if they can. It comes up, and if you don't ask, they're not. You're not necessarily on their mind. If you're not putting yourself in front of them, they may refer someone else. So they just happen to run into it at the coffee shop. So that's that's that's. It gives you a lot more confidence to to ask for that and and expect it even. Dan, I know that when I think back to people that have asked referrals of me, uh, the one guy that stands out in my mind is an insurance agent, one of these old school agents that comes over, he gives you the 45 minute pitch about his insurance products. And at the end, he pulls out his notebook and he says, okay, I have a notebook right here. Give me five names of your friends. And that's very uncomfortable for me. Maybe you've had an experience like that. You know, what would you say to someone who may be listening and that's their perception of asking referrals, that it's uncomfortable and that it, it doesn't really feel good? It is uncomfortable, and in that situation, it's uncomfortable for, for maybe even both both people. But again, we have a we have a way, a system, a process that we ask for a referral. It's a short email, maybe a month after, or, or it's a it's an email that it may be a generic email, but it's it's personal. We put their name on it. We, we refer to their project. How are you doing? You know, if we know their wife, how is your wife? It's not just hey, you know, send us a, send us a referral. Give us five names. It's it's more involved than that. It's 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 more building a relationship, um, you know, or or reminding them that we had a relationship five years ago or whatever it was, and we had you know we were we were successful together, and it's just you know it's it's not you know to give me five names. You know, we finished your job. Jot down five names for me. It's, it's we don't do it quite like that. We have a follow up questionnaire at the end of a project, and we ask them how did we do? You know, what could we do better? You know. You know, are you are you happy? And at the end of that, do you you know if they if they if they are happy? Most of them happy. And thank goodness. Um, we say, is there someone else you can think of that we may be able to help? And that's much pain, much less painful for us and for the the, the client or, or referral. 
Awesome. How has this new mindset about business development, this new skill that you're acquiring of making it rain, so to speak, how has this affected the business? It's, it's, it's affected it. It's very positive. Um, we have, um, we, we're not necessarily super growth minded. We don't want to get really large and grow really fast. So what we're doing is really being able to pick and choose the projects we take. The client, I, I've, I have actually, um, fired for lack of a better word, clients that I've been working with for 20 years. Cause you, you sit back and you look, you know, you take a big picture look at all of this and you go, well, they're not good clients. Why have I been working on these guys for 20 years? I haven't made any money on any of their jobs. They keep saying, well, the next one will be better. I have a bigger job coming or I just need you to help me on this one job. And, you know, the, having this system in place allows us to go, okay, somebody else can do that now. And I'm going to take these four projects that are really good projects. And, you know, that'll last me for six months. I don't have to take 14 little projects. So it's, it, it's, it's made a huge difference in, our quality of work because we're not we're not strung out trying to do all these little jobs and which you know a, a small job and a large job sometimes take almost the amount same amount of time the front end and the back end the only difference is you've spent a little more time in construction documents and and so having having this system in place and being able to to target we actually target the clients we want we pick them out and we pursue them and it it, it makes the process easier, the quality of work is better, the clients are happier. You know, it, it's 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 you know, it's win-win for everyone. What would you say would be the process for an architect who's listening to this and realizes they want to up level the level of their projects? And that's probably everyone, because no matter where we're at, we mm-hmm. always want to get better. Mm-hmm. What would you tell them would be the path from your experience of doing that? Um uh, well, don't don't do what I did and, and try to do it yourself and beat your head against the wall. Find someone that can help you and get involved with a group that's 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 trying to head in that direction. That's the the quickest, easiest way. Um, I mean, I could say go out and write a newsletter, but there's there's so much more to it than that. You need to get involved with someone and and learn learn a process. Getting involved, um, and you know, obviously a mastermind group group of peers is is a great way to do it because it's, it's, it's people going through exactly what you're going through or they have been through it and they've already learned to, to make a few changes. So, you know, that's, that's the first step. Get involved with someone that can help you and, and it'll, it'll and let it grow from there. Awesome. Well, Dan, for those people who are wondering where to go, they can start up by watching a presentation that we have online. Uh, if they go to architectwebinar.com, I know you've seen that presentation and that kind of started your journey with us. So that's available for them. Absolutely. Um, we have been um, extremely pleased and, and uh, I almost feel blessed for having met Enoch, met Richard, gotten involved with that group. It has really, it's really changed our lives. It's, it's been fantastic. Awesome. Dan Shear, thank you so much for joining us from the beautiful land of South Carolina. Thank you, Enoch. And that's a wrap. If you'd like to discover more about the process for creating a better firm with less fires and more fun, go to businessofarchitecture.com forward slash freedom webinar. On that page, you'll be able to sign up for a free 90 minute online training on how to do what Dan talked about in today's interview, how to create a firm that empowers your staff and is set to scale without chaining you to your desk. Today's podcast is sponsored by BQE Core. Office management software for architects. Get rid of the post-it notes and Excel spreadsheets and get real-time insights on the profitability of your firm with a simple and easy to customize graphical dashboard. Say goodbye to undercharging or ending the year wondering where all the profit went. Core gives you the power you need to grow your firm. Learn more and get a free trial at businessofarchitecture.com forward slash demo. The views expressed on this show by my guests do not represent those of the hosts and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract, bond, or commitment except to help you conquer the world. Carpe diem.